example of looking at you from Madison Square Garden for Guns N' Roses? No. For hockey? No way. We're here for the biggest show on earth. What show is that? I think you can tell. Check this out right here. <laughs> Such a good boy. <laughs> This is the Westminster Dog Show. If you like dogs, this is big time. And guess what? We're going to review the basics of wine, if you can hear me over the barking. But we're going to review the basics of wine relating to dogs. Basic grapes, what dog do they relate to? Watch ahead, I'm Mark Oldman, coming at you from the Westminster Dog Show of Madison Square. Alright, so... We are going to go over basic grape types and what their dog, what their canine equivalents are. Let's start with the lighter or mostly white grapes. We're going to start with Pinot Gris, uh, which is, of course, the basis for Pinot Grigio. And let me tell you the problem with a lot of these Pinot Grigios. Um, they are like cut to the Dandy Dinmont Terrier. They're like this dog, basically fluffy, small, um, very real housewife friendly. Uh, they don't do any harm, you know, kind of like the Hippocratic Oath. They do no harm, but they don't have a lot of substance to them. They're a little bit fluffy. These are Pinot Grigios I'm talking about. So they're, I think they're kind of the equivalent of this dandy Dinmont Terrier, okay? However, not all Pinot Grigios are kind of devoid of highs and, and, and really boring. Um, there are some good ones out there. For example, this Chris uh, by the winemaker Franz Haas. This is an example of a, of a good Pinot Grigio. I'm going to pour this and let's see. Here we go. Sniff it. Mmm. You've got some apples and melons. Mmm. You taste it and it has a little more uh, heft, a little more going on in complexity than the normal lemon water you get from a lot of Pinot Grigios. By the way, that's why the Real Housewives take a lot of um, smack, let's say, for their love of Pinot Grigio because there are just a lot of monochromatic, boring types out there. So I would say that a good Pinot Grigio is equivalent to the uh, brown Australian Terrier. You see it, you know, it's cute little eyes, but, you know, compared to the Dinmon Terrier, it's got a little more heft, a little more going on there. Um, still, it's not going to bowl you over like a big dog. It's not going to be a, a grand wine, uh, but Pinot Grigio will be a nice, cute, delicious, delicious, refreshing pour when made right. Okay, so our next wine is going to be Sauvignon Blanc. And we're going to see what dog the good old Sauvignon Blanc equates to. So I've got a bottle of the Chasing Venus here. Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand. Let's get a shot of this. And what we're going to do is, first of all, you see it's not uh, a dark color. It's not like a yellowy color like Chardonnay can be. It's more of a pale straw. When you smell it, oh, that is a big nose. This is a characteristic nose of kind of citrus fruits like lemon and grapefruit and then kind of a great herbal quality, a mown grass smell, a, a herbaceousness as the British say. And you taste it and that's really lively. I mean that just has a lot of pep on it. And what dog, I mean I basically described the dog for you. That is a Weimaraner. And when you think of the Weimaraner, you think of a muscular dog, free of a lot of ornamentation. It's very elegant. It's got this short, uh, kind of lighter silver coat. And most characteristically, it's known for its amazing nose. I mean, it's known for its peppiness, like our Sauvignon Blanc, but it's also known for an amazing nose. It can smell, it was trained, kind of through the centuries to kind of sniff out uh, game and, and, and sniff out treasure. And similarly, our Sauvignon Blanc has such a characteristic nose. So anytime you think of Sauvignon Blanc, I want you to think of the trusty, elegant, muscular, silver Weimaraner. Okay, 
Okay, so our next grape is Chardonnay, the beloved Chardonnay. So I've got some Ferrari Carano Chardonnay right here. I'm going to pour it. Immediately, it looks different than the Sauvignon Blanc. It's going to be richer looking, more of a yellowy color than pale straw. And let's get a nice, let's aerate the wine and get a good sniff. We sniff it up and that's really different than what we had before. It gives you a lot. I mean, this is, this is a full smell. You get um, apricots and uh, maybe some pineapple, other, other uh, tropical fruits. But then you also get evidence of oak barrel aging. So kind of a creamy topping of vanilla and maybe a little bit of smokiness. Mm. And then you taste it as a richer fuller mouth feel, more voluptuous. This is more, Chardonnay is more voluptuous wine type. And that's why, one of the reasons why it's so beloved by people. Um, and by the way, this Ferrari Carano, I think this is in proportion. Um, some Chardonnays can be so rich, so fluffy, that they remind me of a bearded collie. And, okay, bearded collie, that's a big, fluffy, shaggy dog. Uh, for you Brady Bunch aficionados out there, otherwise known as Tiger on the Brady Bunch. It's a big American fun dog. And, you know, Chardonnay can come in other manifestations, but sometimes, especially in from New World places like California, Australia, they make it a big shaggy dog, bearded collie style. Um, sometimes Chardonnay is so big and so friendly, kind of spells out in the glass its own uh, a smile mark uh, that I think of it as another dog, and that is the Samoyed. Samoyed is a big, white, happy dog. It looks like a sort of dog that can like pull you around in a sled and then lick, lick your uh, cheek in thanks for it. Big, happy, fun, friendly, cheerful dog, and again, kind of a white, fluffy coat. It's a sort of dog that you'd buy at FAO Schwartz. I mean, it looks halfway to a stuffed animal. And when you think of your Chardonnay, especially richer, fuller types, happy types, think of your Samoyed or think of your bearded collie. Okay, next up is Riesling, um, usually from Germany. I have a bottle of Dr. Lucin Riesling. It can come from all, all over the globe, including American spots, but Germany kind of has the template for Riesling. Let's check it out. And get a hit of this. Oh, wow. Riesling's nose, its aromatic qualities are so incredibly lovely. Mm. You taste it, and there's a lively spritz of acidity on there. I tell people who don't yet like Riesling to visualize lemonade. A little bit floral, a little bit sweet, or, or sweet seeming, but not in a cloying bad way, but then also spritzy, tangy acidity. And what dog am I thinking of for Riesling? Uh, none other than the German Schauser. Uh, not only does the Schnauzer share Teutonic origins, they're both German, but uh, Schnauz actually means snout, the bearded snout that we find on the German Schnauzer because it has such a great sense of smell and Rieslings have so such generous uh, aromatic qualities. Stone fruits and flowers when you smell the Riesling and great lively acidity and like in the Dr. Lucin when it says cabinet they're different styles of Riesling, different types, different ripeness levels, but when it's Cabernet, you're more likely to get a drier style Riesling. But see, the German uh, Schnauzer and the Riesling, they're like, they're more of connoisseur's uh, items or, you know, objects of connoisse connoisseur's loves. Unlike, let's say, a, a Chardonnay, which is loved by everyone, it's really the cognoscenti, the insiders who love German Rieslings and also love the German Schnauzer. Okay, next up in the dog run where we equate wine to dogs is Gewürztraminer. 
Seems unpronounceable, but it's actually not so bad. Gewurz Treminer. Try it. Gewurz Treminer. Excellent. Let's try a little Ugel Gewurz Treminer. And what I'm going to do is empty this out right here. And we'll get a shot of this. So we spin it. So much going on in there. You taste it, and this Gewurz has just the classic, characteristic, big aromas of lychees, rose water, a little bit of pepper there. Uh, when you taste it, it's not really, really acidic. It, it almost has, has kind of a muted acidity. It's, it's soft, and it's a richer wine. So what dog are we going to equate this to? It's got to be the entertainer of dogs, and that is the Bull Terrier. Yes, this is Buds McKenzie, you know, the famous Bud Light dog. Uh, Theodore Roosevelt had a Bull Terrier, and what Bull Terriers are really known for are huge personalities. Uh, you know, they're known for this kind of triangular, see those triangular eyes, kind of an egg-shaped head. It's a funny-looking dog, and like a Virch demeanor, you either love it or you hate it. A lot of people love Gewurz Treminer, and they love it, A, because they learn to pronounce it. Remember, Gewurz Treminer. And B, they love it for that lychee's quality, the maybe slightly sweet taste, um, but not very sweet. And the fact that that taste and its kind of softness will cool down the kind of vindaloo victimized tongue. It, it will cool off spicy food a little bit. So, Gewurz Treminer, Bull Terrier. Okay, so the final wine we're going to do is not a grape uh, per se, but it's a wine style, and that is pink wine. Let's talk, you and me, a little bit about pink wine. When you see a wine that's pink, you might think of, uh, I don't know, a sickly sweet Cosmo from Sex and the City. Uh, pink is kind of a tawdry color, and you know, it's deserved in, in some, for some reasons in the wine world because white Zinvendel. A lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them are made with leftover grapes or so much residual sugar that it's cloying and it's just, it kind of weighs you down and you can't really take it seriously. So when I think of a pink wine like this, especially a lot of white Zins, I think of the Commodore. Now, yes, this is this kind of dog, heavily corded, kind of ridiculous looking. Let me apologize to Commodore owners. I, I'm sorry, but I just don't get this dog. It's kind of like a living mop. It's like one of those things you'd see in a car wash. In fact, Beck in his album, or on his album cover for Odele, includes a Commodore jumping over a fence. So it's more of a comical dog. I, I really don't get it, and, and I don't totally get these kind of cloyingly sweet pink wines. However, there is hope, and that is um, a pink wine isn't necessarily sweet, and there are dry rosé styles out there that are really good. For example, let's pour this Jean-Luc Colombo. This is the Cape Blue Rosé. This is from the Southern Rhone Valley in France. That color, kind of beautiful watermelon color there. Then you smell it. Mm, and you get kind of a cherry quality to it, but it's restrained. Mm, you taste it, lively acidity, and it's totally dry, despite its pink hue, its blushing hue, it's actually totally dry. So the dog that equates to this would be, and by the way, this is a mouthful, the Nova Scotia Duck Tolling Retriever. Um, now, I don't think that was on the tip of my tongue. I actually had to go into deep research to figure this one out. Um, but that's what, look at this dog. It's medium bodied. It has kind of a, a reddish hue to it. And most importantly, between the dog and the wine, it's up for anything. And so is a good dry rosé. Good dry rosé like this, you can have it with the foods we associate with white wine, those we associate with red wine, um, a, a duck tolling retriever. Look it up. It ta they talk about how you can take it hunting, you can take it camping, you could have it by your side when you're watching TV. It's incredibly versatile. 
and so is dry rosé. That's it for today. Next time we're doing which wines, which red wines equate with which dogs. But coming from the dog pound, I remain Mark Oldman, yelping, howling, and telling you to push it.